Hello and welcome to another episode on the Alchemist channel. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since the last vlog. Uh, I think that was the ride out. Uh, in fact, we did two rides out. We had unusually warm weather. Uh, that was back in February. And well, today spring has arrived. Uh, in fact, yesterday as well. Uh, so today we are going to do as promised. Um, we are going to service the 48. She's just over 5,000 miles now. The weather's dry, so it means we can do it outside. Obviously we're lost for room at the moment in the shed. Uh, but a quick update. Quick update on the garage. So we've cleared most of the land now. All the trees are down. So the next step is order the garage get the base put in and away we go but for now let's concentrate on the service so let's get some tools out okay so you don't need many tools when you're servicing your sportster whether it's a thousand or a five thousand mile most of it is just inspection and uh, just a screwdriver and a couple of things just to help you along the way so first thing T30, you need a T30 Torx, that's for your derby cover. I'd use a T-handle one like that, or you can get a little set like this. I prefer these uh, purely because you've got a little bit more force on them when using them from that side. Cool. Uh, screwdriver, that's to take your oil bung out. Um, I do have the uh, screwdriver type handle one on the spring, uh, but they're not six, they're not seven, they're not eight mil. Um, I think they're imperial, so we'll just use a screwdriver. If you can't unscrew your oil filter by hand, oil filter strap. Hopefully we'll be able to take it off by hand, but I've got a uh, aluminium cover on mine, we'll see that in a bit. Always carry a few rags as well for spillages. And if you're struggling for something to drain your oil into, then go into the kitchen and pinch your baking tray, absolutely perfect. So here's your drain bung, which is just tucked up out of the way here, and that's secured with the clip. Take the clip off, bring it down in position, and you can see the tray is gonna catch that oil nice without any spillage. So the next thing we're going to do is warm the bike up. Okay, so the bike's warmed up and we're ready to drain the oil. So we're just going to release this clip now and pull this bung out. It doesn't look too bad at all. A little bit of moisture in the oil, you can see a little bit of white. But what we'll do you release your cap okay and that will just allow the air to 
go in and flow a little bit quicker. So I'm just seeing a little bit of light moisture in there. And that was probably due to a lot of uh, heavy rain riding through last year in Scotland. Where the air filter uh, was popping fast in. Nearly stalled the engine a few times, so she took on a little bit. But apart from that, the colour isn't too bad. Now, what I do for a living, where I work, every time we service a machine, we take oil samples and send them away. And you'd be surprised at what they find when they put the oil sample through their uh, little special machines. And they'll come up with water ingress, uh, aluminiums, irons, all various types of wear and tear that goes on inside your engine. And most of it's detrimental. Uh, but it gives us an indication then if anything is going seriously wrong with the insides of your engine, which is quite handy. Uh, but for these, there's any need to worry. So we're nearly there with the oil now. Just barely a drip. Oil filter. Now I have an aluminium cover on mine. Nice little cover these. Get them in all various styles. Looks good on there. Tightens up with two little Allen Grub screws. Uh, but my filter, what I've just noticed that I've used this filter strap to take it off, which is on a ratchet. I use that one nearly every day. Uh, what I've noticed taking this off is whoever services at a thousand mile actually over tightened this filter, and uh, she was well too over tight for the bike. Okay, we can get it with a hand now, and the reason I always carry rags is put a rag underneath, catch any of that residual oil, and that's going to come off your filter. Save it going on the side of your bike and all over the floor. Okay, as you can see it running down now. Okay, I always have something underneath to catch it. You can see the reason what I was saying there, how the filter is crushed in at the bottom. And that's how tight it was. So again, you can see the importance of having a drip tray underneath. The last thing you want to do, if you're not in a garage or a workshop, is get oil all over your flags and have to clean that off. Okay. And the rag underneath, which has just caught the residual oil there, helps having more spill to clean. So just remember them little points. Well, in all fairness, this oil has still got some colour to it. Although looking in the pan now, you can see the contaminants. A bit of froth there as well. A little bit of rub water in there, I can tell that. The consistency is still actually quite sticky. So for, for 4,000 mile, the oil hasn't actually broken up. Is it clearing? It's actually not too bad at all. But the more you service your bike, you can service it every 500 for all I care, and serve it every 1000 or stick to the, the schedule. Don't forget the oil is the blood of your engine, most important. So the oil I've gone for is a genuine oil. So we've got the genuine 2050 standard Harley Davidson oil, 4 litres, transmission primary, chain case lubricant, genuine and genuine black oil filter. And the reason being is it's tried and tested. Uh, they put it in the bikes from the factory, so if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Price-wise, it's not that different than buying any other special uh, oils on a 2050 or transmission oil from Future or the likes of other manufacturers as well. So that's what we're going for. Okay, so once we're happy that everything is drained out, we can clean things up and start to put things back together. Most important thing with an oil filter, never put an oil filter on dry. 
you want to clean off the ring around there and then just put a light smear of oil around the seal and then it's just hand tight and a little nip again there's no actually need to use the tool to put a filter back on it's just hand tight until you can't tighten anymore and that will do okay so just a light smear of oil you can see the shine on that locate it just remember to feel the thread make sure you don't cross thread it it should glide in there nice like that you can pull that rug out of there now Nip it up like that and keep going until you, you feel you can't do it anymore. Wipe off any oils, you can get a grip. And then one more for good luck. And that's it, oil filter done. Another little tip if you want to clean the last remaining bit of oil engine oil out, just get your oil can, just put a little drop of oil down. And as you can see now, she's starting to run out clean. So now we know that the last remaining bit of the oil oil is out and everything you put in there now is going to be straight out of the tin. Okay, and when you're finally happy with that, remember, put your bung back in and tighten up the clip and then push that back up to the chassis. And remember to put your clip back on. So just remember to fill it to the, the fill line keep checking your dipstick but you'll be checking the oil again when it's when it's hot as per what the dipstick says okay so we've topped up the oil tank now and if you look you can see we are just right on the top mark of the dipstick slightly over and the reason you should always do that if you remember when we took the oil filter off when you take the oil filter off you lose this much oil and just remember when you start your engine up from cold as well not to over rev it and the reason being is your oil filter is going to be empty until your pump circulates the oil the fresh oil that you just put in your tank and through the oil filter to the pump and therefore to your engine Now initially when you start your bike up after a service you will have the oil light come on for two or three seconds uh, from what I was just saying about the oil filter and that's the reason why because your pump will be starved for momentarily until the oil gets through your engine. So we'll start her up now.
we'll just let the oil settle down for a minute and then we'll recheck that level on the dipstick, okay? And one thing you can do, uh, I didn't do it this time, but while you're waiting for the oil to drain out is do your preliminary checks on the, uh, the rest of the bike for the 5000 service uh, for anything uh, that you might think needs replacing is worthwhile doing at this point. Uh, you probably just see me there, I'm just checking belt tension and just making sure that all the teeth on the belt are still in good order. Check your pulley. Now, one of the most important things is the brake pads. And mine are about 50% there, so we're still okay. We'll probably change them in a couple of thousand. And uh, the other thing is, if you run a standard air filter in a box, remember to take the cover off and check the filter unit. Again, if you're running something like a k n type or a mesh type, uh, the Allen Ness one, these have a special coating so they're not oiled. Most of these filters you'll see have uh, a red tinge to them. With a red tinge, and that's the special uh, oil you can get for those type of filters. And the oil does, it serves a purpose in taking out micro particles and sticks to the oil, uh, but over time you'll find that wears, it becomes like a pink colour. So that oil, therefore, is not doing its job 100%. So, good idea to have a look at how to re-oil your uh, filter if you've got one of those type. Okay, so we've warmed the bike up, now it's time to recheck that oil. And there you go, if you remember what I was saying about the oil filter. So now she's gone around the system, the pump and the engine, you can find that you'll find that she's just sunk a little bit now underneath the run into hot line. So we'll top that up, back up to the mark, and then we're finished. Okay, so we're happy that any engine service has been done. We've run it, we've checked the oil, we've topped it up, she's fine. So the next thing now, transmission. We're going to take the derby cover off. So if you notice now, I've put a piece of wood underneath the bike, on the stand. So it kicks it more in an upright position. One, it's easier when you're putting the oil in to check your level, and two, when you take the derby cover off, you're not going to spill any oil out of there as well. So, okay, so when you've got all the oh, and, and just going back when I said T30, these are actually T27, some are T27, some are T30, these are actually 27. When you take your bolts out, remember when you take the cover off, just be aware of the clutch spring. And if you can see just in there, that is your oil level. There isn't that much in there. And then your drain plug, which is just underneath there. Okay, so once you're happy that you've drained all your oil out of there, which that looks about right, we can go ahead and put the plug back in. But what you'll notice, before you do that, on the end of there is a little magnet just to catch any filings. You see a little silvery colour, which is quite normal, it's just wear and tear. In case you clean that off before you put that back, so we'll do that now. Right, so nice and clean, ready to go back. Just check the o-ring in the bottom of there, and we're good to go. as a reference before I'm sure I said to undo the plug the transmission plug I'm sure I said 17 mil I think it was because I was holding a 16 17 wrench so remember it's a 16 mil side you know, my size is wrong today so we're ready to fill her up and that's what we're using genuine formula transmission and primary and then we'll just fill her up through there with this funnel. Now these are great, you can use anything you want if you can get it in. Sometimes you can buy these and it has the extendable uh, filler on there which you pull out, which you probably get in there and just, just do it with that. But 
for the price these things are handy so we'll use that and we'll go ahead and fill her up okay so we're happy now we've put the full one quart of primary oil in I wonder if you can see the level there but she'll take all of that uh, one thing to remember I've just noticed I've got a slight nick in my seal here it's not been leaking but that's something I will be changing and the other thing is to adjust your clutch that's something else we can go over and probably do that another time when we change the seal we'll do the clutch adjustment that'll be alright for now right folks so the last and final thing to do is to tighten up your derby cover and I just thought I'd take an opportunity while the screws were off to paint the screws gold it looks a little bit tired tons better now there is a sequence for these okay so you want to go opposites opposites like that and just nip them up until you feel it bite bites like that and again and again and the final sequence is just there is a torque setting for these just experience with me okay and quarter of a turn quarter of a turn to return remember not to use loctites on these as well that one was just a little bit slack the reason being is you don't want to round the torques heads off or else you'll find yourself drilling them out Okay, so you do that until you, you can't feel anymore. Okay, tight. All good to go. So thank you for watching this episode on Surface.